lungs taste the air of time on past fallen sand. Greetings, warrior folk. This video is addressing a really important question I've had in one of my videos recently. Can a buckler kill? Now this stems from a video I put up, which was a very short short, uh, specifically regarding uh, fighting with a buckler and sword against the man with a flail. Uh, the man in question being Six Dead Zero Hema, and his video, which has come up very recently regarding whether the flail and longsword is worth using, dual wieldings wise, uh, in the same layout as the Witch King used, is now available. So you should go definitely check that out on his channel. Link will be in the description below. So the point of my video though, is that in the comments of one of the shorts that I put up, people were getting quite irate about the idea that I had said in my commentary over the video, that my punching my opponent with the buckler uh, after he had wrapped up my weapon, uh, the punch being my response to that, would have uh, killed him or taken him out of the fight. People disagreed with that. Uh, one of the comments in particular, which I remember, uh, which I found quite funny was, um, I think you overestimate the power of your punch, which is fair enough. People are entitled to their opinion. And I thought rather than arguing with people in the comment section, trying to justify my position, I would simply test them. Uh, so this is the buckler in question. It weighs one kilogram and two grams. So it's quite heavy. Uh, it's a solid piece of wood using a forged uh, steel boss. And that was the thing that I was hitting with. So the actual strike, uh, if you imagine my um, sword is now wrapped up, was a punch like that. Um, and I think the reason people took umbrage with it is because they watched the video and they saw me pull my hit. And for those of you who aren't down with the lingo of fighting, um, there's a good reason we don't actually just beat the living stuffing out of one another when we're fighting. There's a good reason that we pull our hits. And when we say pull our hit, if a real hit is a full-bodied swing as hard as you can with the intention of like killing and maiming that person, a pulled hit is a hit that basically will touch the person with enough force to in, uh, sort of impart a little bit of impact to them so they're aware that they've been hit, but not so hard as to cause injury. Because weirdly enough, if uh, HEMA practitioners were constantly being concussed, knocked out, broken bones and killed, the sport wouldn't, you know, be viable, obviously. Um, so in the same way you have light sparring when you're like training for boxing, where you'll sort of punch each other a bit, but not full power, it's the exact same principle when we're sparring. So for anyone who watches the videos and go, <laughs> there's no way that would actually hurt a person. No, probably not. That's why we're wearing all the protective equipment and using things like synthetic swords or trainers, which are blunt. In a real fight, in a real combat situation, and I know that's the sort of go-to for all self-defense sort of like arguments on the internet, in real combat, impacts tend to be a lot harder and a lot more aggressive and a lot more geared towards the murder of the person in question. When we're training, no, not so much. Um, so I think the point of this video is just to ally some of the concerns of the people watching that somehow um, I was being disingenuous when I suggested that punching a person in the front of their face uh, with a steel boss would kill them. Um, because I'm pretty sure it would, and uh, most of the people I know agree with me. But the reason I say that is because if the initial impact, bearing in mind being punched full force, isn't great with a, even a bare fist, but with a steel plate attached to that fist is bad news for you. Um, if the person is knocked unconscious in a sword fight, they're dead because the person is then going to dispatch them on the ground. They're not going to go, oh, oh, poor lad, he's having a little nap. I guess I'll just leave him. So with all that being said and the context established, I'm going to jump straight into testing now. We're using this buckler, we are using me as the person throwing the punch, seeing as I as the subject of the criticism, uh, to make facsimiles of the human brain and skull uh, as best we can. We're going to use watermelons as a, a sort of like a basis point of, sort of what would happen in terms of the amount of force that's imparted by one of those bucklers. Uh, I've also gotten some coconuts because I'm actually quite curious to see whether the impact would crack these. Um, I'm probably going to drain the actual like milk out of them because I don't really want to waste it and I'm planning on making myself a cocktail with what's left of the test subjects after all this is done. Uh, so it will be a coconut shell uh, and I'm going to mount them outside uh, and I'm going to go and blast them with my buckler and we'll see what happens and we can put this silly debate to rest. Enjoy. Jesus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
That was, <laughs> that was a lot more dramatic than I was expecting it to be, to be honest. <laughs> so it's it's been, been entirely destroyed. Um, it's in complete pieces and it's spattered all over the cardboard I've set up just to catch it. So, you know, <laughs> so far, so far, so good. <laughs> Going left-handed now. It's my non-dominant hand and the hand I was punching with in the video. Um, so I'm going to do literally the same thing, left-handed. <clears throat> Making a right bloody mess here. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I need a. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the carnage continues. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It just, it just exploded. I was sort of expecting it to sort of like crack or something. I was expecting it to, I don't know, not do that. <laughs> All right, um, this one is a helmeted strike. So I've put the watermelon inside of a fencing mask, very similar to the ones we use. Well, it's the same one, same brand. Um, and I'm just going to see how much protection it offers to a full powered strike to the face uh, with a buckler. Um, having seen what happens to the watermelons, um, completely unprotected, I'm hoping this will be a little less dramatic, but I'm Fairly confident this is going to need a good wash afterwards, but we shall see. I'll go and fetch that. So even in the helmet and sat more or less how you would wear a helmet, um, that hit has exploded lead watermelon. Um, it's, there's chunks of it all inside the helmet. It's, it's a mess. It's a mess guys. Um, so yeah, uh, if your head was a watermelon, um, and I punched you as hard as I physically could with a buckler, um, it wouldn't be good. It would be bad. Um, so let's assume you have a skull, which you do. Uh, let's assume that uh, your brain is made of fat and water, uh, which it is. Um, this isn't going to be, you're not going to have a good time. Um, will you die? I mean, I'd like to hope not, but you know, after you wake up, you might have wished you had. It's going to feel a damn sight worse than a hangover. A coconut sty is a British thing. Is that just us? Coconut. Boss. Right-handed. <clears throat> Whoa, that was a crack. Doesn't look to have cracked. I don't think. I'm not sure if I hit it straight on. I'm gonna have another go, because that felt like a glancing shot. <laughs> so that has cracked the top of the coconut there. If you can see that. So if I squeeze it a little bit, you actually can see. So that's crack the coconut. Um, that would not be good. And that's most of the way around, it looks like. Point of impact was here. And there's radial fractures going that way, that way. And it looks like to be one going up there as well. So um, that's cracked. I'm going left-handed with this one. Um, I'm not expecting to actually crack it because my left hand is not as powerful as my right hand. Um, so I'm expecting to knock it but probably not crack it 
I don't think. Also, my technique sucks throwing punches in my left hand. I'm very right hand oriented. Oh, thank you for coming back. So no, it didn't crack it. It doesn't look like. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. Again, no, not cracked it. Not cracked it with my left hand, which is fair enough. I didn't expect to. What conclusions can we draw, if any? Well, seeing as though all three watermelons exploded, I think that's pretty indicative of how much force is being applied through the arm, into the buckler, into the head. Uh, I think if you were bare helmeted, there's a very good chance that it would kill you. Um, your brain would be rattled around like you wouldn't believe. Your skull may or may not be left intact. Uh, I managed to break one coconut uh, unhelmeted. Um, and if your skull cracks, it's a really serious, serious injury that you've just sustained. So it's safe to assume that if you were in a fight, and your skull is cracked with the force of the impact applied to your skull, uh, especially if it was in a combat scenario like this, you would pretty much be dead. Um, if you were in a helmet, so we found with the watermelon inside of the Red Dragon helmet, and big props to Red Dragon, um, because that helmet is only rated to 350 newtons, um, it's, it was made with sort of like light sparring in mind, uh, and it's supplied with one of the rolling synthetics blades. Uh, so I don't think it was really designed with someone being punched in the face full body with a buckler in mind. If you were wearing a full face helmet, like a medieval helmet, then yeah, it would keep your head safe from that kind of impact, because that's kind of what they were designed for. Even with that kind of medieval helmet, I still think you would have a really bad day underneath that. Uh, getting punched full in the face, the guys at Bohurt will tell you, is not great. It's very uncomfortable, at the very least. Um, so assuming that your kit is peak, um, very much um, sort of a professional loadout in terms of full helmet, uh, padded coif, mail, all that jazz, and you're a professional knight, let's say, a medieval combatant within a full harness, uh, someone punching you full in the face with a buckler, while not ideal, would probably not knock you out, would probably not kill you. So in that scenario, sure, um, it would not cause lead directly to your death. However, if you were fighting, a say, a footman, someone who's wearing, say, a kettle helmet, or a bassinet, or something with an open face, for example, they're going to have a bad day. Uh, that kind of an impact would scramble your brains like eggs, and you're likely to die. I, th I still stand by what I say, that if you were punched in the face with a buckler full pelt, uh, it is likely to kill you. And the reason I say that is because at the very least, it will knock you unconscious. If a punch with a buckler can explode a watermelon, um, I I'm pretty confident it can knock a human being out. And if you are knocked unconscious in a sword fight, that person is going to dispatch you while you are unconscious, and so the fight is effectively over for you. Um, I uh, appreciate that um, perhaps uh, if someone was in full harness uh, and full armor, it would not have the same outcome, and that's fair enough. So we can conclude from this that if you get punched in the face with a buckler, it's bad. If you wear a helmet while being punched in the face with a buckler, buckler it's not good. It may still do a serious amount of brain damage to you. It may knock you unconscious. Um, but that being said, uh, your chances of dying are a lot lower in that circumstance. So I think everyone's right <laughs> in this scenario. I'm right, they're right, everyone's right. We all have um, put out various ideas around the idea of fighting with a buckler and the various outcomes of different scenarios. And to be honest, I think it very much come down with whom fight, who is fighting whom and what kind of equipment they're wearing. Um, uh, so with that being said, um, I'd like to do more of these. I've never actually punched a watermelon before. That was really cool. Um, and to see it explode like that was was really interesting. I was not expecting that at all. I was expecting more of a wet slap and to fall, but they just went, like someone shot them with a gun. Um, so pretty chuffed with that. Pretty chuffed I managed to crack a coconut because I was I was pretty confident that wasn't going to happen. Um, and uh, I think the main story here is that uh, if you perform weapon testing with tasty fruit, uh, you will have a beverage available to you afterwards. So in conclusion, if you get punched full force in the face, and you're not wearing any protective equipment, you are very likely to die. And I think I, uh, that should come as no surprise to literally anyone. Um, if you are wearing a helmet, uh, and in this particular scenario, I was using a fencing helmet, uh, which is 
you know, pretty decent, it's still going to do serious, serious damage, okay? So um, this is an example of why it's really important to pull your hits while doing HEMA. Uh, you just can't fight full force um, because, you know, we like our training partners and we don't want them to die. Um, so when you're fighting, be kind to people. Uh, don't punch them as hard as you can. And if you happen to uh, film uh, said interaction and then put it up online and other people comment on it, you know, telling you that, you know, your assessment on the particular uh, scenario is wrong. Um, do what I did. Buy some fruit and pummel the crap out of it with a uh, medieval buckler. Because at the very least, even if you don't find the results that you want, you'll have a tasty beverage available at the end of it. Um, I'm going to put the recipe for this in the description below, and I'll try and come up with a cool name about it. But all in all, uh, to summarize, buckler in the face equals bad day. So with that being said, consider a like and subscribe. Check out my channel for all the other things that I do. I have shorts, videos, and all sorts of breakdowns, lessons, pretty much anything to take the fancy of a, a would-be sellsword. Uh, or any kind of warrior folk of any description, really. So go and check out the rest of the channel. Have a nice day. Um, and as always, long live the fighters. Oh, God. It's everywhere. <laughs>